Hello, everyone, and welcome to the virtual public board meeting for Brentwood Darlington Neighborhood Association, April 7th, 2022. I am Chelsea Powers, she, her pronouns, the current board chair, and um, we're going to go ahead and get going. I'm going to continue letting folks in as we move through our agenda. As you are aware, since you're here and it's a virtual meeting, we're currently doing virtual meetings. Uh, we have three that meet. This one meets every month and land use and work group tend to meet as needed, um, usually about every other month. Our agenda has changed a couple times since it went up on the website originally, but um, we have one more little change tonight. We're gonna shift the uh, discussion about the community center letter to the other business in the meeting to make sure we have enough time for our guest. Speaking of which, we have a special guest later in the meeting, uh, candidate for 5th Congressional District, uh, Jimmy McLeod Skinner. We'll kick it off with introductions. You already heard from me, and I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of call down the line on the screen and let folks introduce themselves. So here we go. Uh, Pam, you're first on my screen. Hello, everyone. Uh, I was born in Brentwood, Darlington, so I've lived here for a very long time and not my first meeting. I'm a former uh, board uh, member and I don't recall the last uh, or the first time I heard about BDNA. Uh, so I'm happy to be here tonight. Welcome, Pam. You may not know Pam is also our rep on um, Pam. What are you, what are you repping these days? Oh, um, well, I finished my work on the uh, Regional Arts Council Advisory Committee for selecting the public artwork in the Errol Heights Park, uh, but I'm still serving on the uh, TGM Advisory Committee, also known as the Lower Southeast Area Rising Plan, which is a quarter million dollar planning study being conducted by the city of Portland uh, Bureau of Planning and Sustainability. So we've been working for about a year now and uh, another year or so to go. And if you're interested in uh, detailed updates, all of the documents are on the city's website. Just Google Lower Southeast Area Rising uh, and, and you'll find uh, three weighty tomes out there. Thank you, Pam. Derek, you're next on my list. Yes, uh, my name's Derek Covey. I've been living in the neighborhood since 2012. My pronouns are he and him. And I'm a board member at large. I do community outreach, especially to new neighbors and other things as needed. Thank you. Thanks, Derek. Um, Kim DeLeo, you're next. Hi, I'm Kim. Uh, she, her pronouns. I've lived in Brentwood, Darlington since 2015. I've attended probably about a year of meetings now and uh, looked for BDNA, found uh, information on Facebook, which led me to uh, online. And I'm excited for gardening. See all of my plant starts behind us. <laughs> it's too early to put them in the ground. I know, I know. <laughs> Yeah, I hear we're not going to have great weather on Monday, but today made me want to be out there as well. I also have my plant starts taking up some quality real estate in the living room. So um, the entire top of a big shelf is, is plant starts and lights right now. <laughs> uh, we'll be talking lots of plant sales later in the uh, agenda too. So be uh, ready for that. Gail, you are next. Uh, she, her pronouns. I've been here forever. I grew up with the dinosaurs here. Um, excited about the whole concert in the park thing. Listened to all the bands and I actually have a preference. That's great because I haven't had a chance, but neighbors, if you're interested in uh, hearing some of the potential bands for our upcoming concert in the park in July, we'll have links at the break that you can listen to before our discussion. Um, Mirabai, you're next. Hi everyone, my name is Mirabai, pronouns she, her. Um, my partner and I run Black Futures Farm in the neighborhood. This will be our third season. Um, this is not my first meeting. Good to see everyone. Hi, Chelsea. 
And I think I heard about BDNA probably through Malcolm and pro Chelsea Malcolm, somewhere in there. Um, and that's about it for me. Welcome, Mirabai. We're happy to see you. Let's Thanks. see. Um, Stephanie, you are next on my list here. Make sure to unmute. All right, thank you. I have unmuted. Uh, my name is Stephanie Frederick. Uh, I have lived in the in Brentwood, Darlington for uh, almost five years, a month short of five years. Uh, this is not my first meeting. I've been to five years worth of me meetings. I am the land use chair, but outgoing. Uh, my last land use meeting will be um, April 14th. And then my last board meeting will be May 5th. Um, it's been a great ride, I've learned a lot, really appreciated the opportunity to, um, to be with the board and, and be a, a land use chair. I learned about BDNA by knowing about the neighborhood association system before I moved here. And it was a reason for moving here. And so I joined even before I moved into my uh, house on Malden Street. And that is all at the moment. Thank you, Stephanie. Laura Lee, you're next on my list. Ah, okay, can you hear me? Okay, I'm outside doing the gardening stuff, watching you guys on my little screen. Uh, I'm Laura Lee. I have lived in the neighborhood for nine years now, um, she, her pronouns, and I first heard about Brown Darlington by walking by our community center, which we are going to talk about tonight. Um, and I am on the board as secretary. Thank you, Laura Lee, a thankless job, but we greatly appreciate it. Uh, Linda Goldser, you're next. You're muted there, Linda. Okay, I finally found it. <laughs> um, I am Linda Goldser, she, her pronouns. Um, I am have been the director of the Multnomah <laughs> County Master Gardener Demonstration Garden going on two years now, um, but I have volunteered at the demonstration garden for uh, probably since 2017. And I believe I'd, I've attended these meetings for maybe three years now. Welcome, Linda. And Lynn, you're next on my list. Hi, everyone. Everyone, uh, my name is Lynn. My pronouns are she, her. I have been in the neighborhood uh, for 29 years now. It's not my first meeting. I've been a uh, treasurer since 2018. I first heard about the BDNA through a Facebook post. And we are grateful to have Lynn. Lynn is also our uh, training our incoming treasurer, Kim Hill, who gets to introduce herself next. Hi, everyone. Can you hear me okay? Good. Um, I am off camera this evening. She, her pronouns. I am enjoying some late dinner. Um, I have lived, worked in, or I have lived in the neighborhood for about four plus years, uh, not my first meeting. I heard about BDNA last year, a collaboration with a um, local nonprofit on a program called Soak It Week. We'll re return to that in 2022. And I think that's it for me. Um, oh gosh, I should probably mention that I'm supporting Lynn and her uh, transition back to life, so. <laughs> and we are so grateful to have an incoming treasurer. Treasurer is another one of those tough roles to fill and very thankless, but super necessary. Let's see, I saw another one come in. Uh, Mary, we don't wanna miss you, go ahead. Um, Mary Davis, uh, she, her, my pronouns, lived in the neighborhood since 1994 and I attended my first meeting at that in that year um, that I heard about the BDA through a, a flyer. Welcome Mary. All right, did I miss anyone? All right, good core group tonight. Let's go ahead and move along. We always start with community announcements and our favorite, the Green Thumb site for Learning Gardens Lab. Um, 
I have an update from them. They're having their Earth People Fair again this year. Woo! Um, so that will be April. So I got to get closer to the screen. 16th, Saturday, 11 to 2. And uh, BDNA will have a table there. So uh, if you want to come say hi to me, that's where I'll be. And it's exciting. They haven't gotten to have an event for a couple of years. So I know I'm really looking forward to it. And then I get to turn it over to Mirabai to tell us what's new and what's good at Black Futures Farm if you got any cool things. Yeah, yeah. Um, let's see what's new and what's good. Spring is here, so we're getting everything ready, of course. I don't know if anyone has heard of or met or knows Daniel, our new, the new member of our farm family. Um, he's great. He's taking the lead on a lot of things. He's um, getting his master gardener certifi certification and he's, he's just doing a lot of work, like taking CSA training and small farms training. And um, so that is great. And then we have another new member of the family, Keone. And I'm gonna send out a newsletter and introduce everyone and give people an update, but um, that's who it is. Malcolm stepped away a little bit. He's just kind of doing, um, managing the PSEF stuff, clean energy, infrastructure things that are going on at the farm. And then, um, just lending his wonderful, enthusiastic personality to everything. Uh, what else is new? Oh, we are, we don't have a CSA this season, but we're gonna do community appreciation pop-ups. So we're gonna be sending out, we have a whole list of folks and I am pretty sure everyone here, I'll have to check with Chelsea actually to get um, info about that. But um, anyway, we're just gonna invite people to the farm to hang out and see what we're doing and grab some food. And um, yeah, just like reconnect and get to know everyone after COVID, re know everyone, um, see who's still around and who's not and who's say not. hi. So those are probably the, the main things. New farmers, community pop-ups. Yeah, I think that's about it. Oh, we got a, um, a Metro placemaking grant to cultivate, uh, yeah, a, um, black uh, wellness space. It's actually BIPOC because we're going to do some black and indigenous women's healing stuff there. And so that's really cool. And the space is kind of, it's taking shape more in my head than on the land right now, but, but um, that's going to change pretty soon. So I think that's about it. Awesome. All sorts of great things happening. I can't wait to see those things, those, um, the the two the appreciation and the new space coming in um and if those new farmers want to come chat with bdna they are welcome to they can just email us and say hey we'd like some time on the agenda and we'll give them time to introduce themselves and tell neighbors a little bit about what they're doing um also in the comments we have a question of do you have a link to sign up for the black futures farm newsletter um yeah if you go to our website um, there's Black a, farm. yeah, blackfutures.farm. There should be something in the, at the top for you to sign up. And I think it'll say volunteer application, but just do that. And it all comes into the same place and then goes into the spreadsheet that then goes into the newsletter. So, or put it in the chat and I'll, and I'll get it from here. And if none of those work, you can email the BDNA and we'll connect you with Mira by <laughs> Malcolm. We will find a way. Oh. And it was Daniel. And who was the other new one? Keone. Keone. So awesome. Give him a good neighborhood welcome from us and can't wait to see the new things. Right on. Thank you. Next up, uh, Master Gardeners. This slide we have seen a few times. So I think Linda probably wants me to skip to this slide. Go ahead, Linda. Um, yeah. Um, well, this has to do with the incredible edible plant sale that we have on May 7th. And it's our major fundraiser of the year for all of Multnomah County and uh, Master Gardeners. And uh, you should come on by and get uh, your organic uh, plant starts, mostly vegetables. Um, and at the demo garden, we're full on gardening. Uh, we have lots going on. Um, many shrubs are in bloom. This is an old photo. I'll need to get you an updated photo uh, slide. Um, and we welcome anyone to come and visit the garden 
anytime. We're open Mondays through Thursdays from nine to noon. Stop on by and see how um, what we're doing. Um, and we'll also have two tables at the uh, Learning Gardens Lab Earth Day event uh, on the 16th. One of the tables is ask a master gardener. So anyone can come to the table and ask any gardening questions. And the other table, we're going to be giving away free mason bee houses that have been made and uh, donated by the Franklin High School shop students. So um, we have about 50 of those to give away on that day. So come by for that too. I have a question, Linda. Yes. Derek. So the yeah, the incredible edibles plant. So that's on um, May 7th, but it's at your uh, what uh, 1624 Northeast Hancock Street location. Yes, it, it is. It's in Northeast. It's in a church parking lot. Gotcha. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the sale itself is not located in our neighborhood, but the funds raised go to support the master gardeners that operate out of the demo garden out of black or excuse me, green thumb learning. The I get this. It's been a long day. The kids were really wild today. Green thumb site where the master gardeners, Black Futures Farm, and Learning Gardens Lab all reside. All right, I actually got that whole sentence out instead of just like random words. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Um, speaking of plant sales, also on the Green Thumb site, the community transition program, that's our um, PPS school over there. They have a plant sale and we missed the first one already, but the April ones are coming up. And uh, if you've seen around the neighborhoods, neighborhood in late April, early May, the big hanging baskets all over that suddenly pop up, this is where folks are getting them. So if you want a big hanging basket for Mother's Day or just to decorate your house, they have a great assortment um, and they usually have some great house plants too. So not only do they have, you know, veggies and flowers and all that, but they tend to also have house plants and hanging baskets. So if you are also a house plant junkie, Kim, um, <laughs> make sure and check out that plant sale or don't if you need to protect your wallet. Um, Mary, tell us what's new at Leech. Well, I wanted to give you a follow-up report on the Sparrowhawk native plant sale. Uh, Pre-orders were, were required for that sale and we had that period of time between February 15th and March 15th for people to go online and, and order their plants. We sold out all the leech garden pickup sites within the first two weeks of that piece, uh, period of time. So with, that went really well. We were pretty amazed by the response we got on the pre-order and the pickup site because um, it will get a small uh, percentage of sales from that to go towards the operations. Now, how it's gonna go for pickup is tomorrow and Saturday will let us know how that goes. And if this goes well, we'll try and do this again next year. And we may uh, do this special um, nursery uh, effort with other nurseries and see how it goes. Cause that might be the wave of the future. So people can order online and then pick them up. Well, with any luck, um, BDNA will be hosting the uh, fall pickup for Southeast, um, where I'm still arguing with the community center about our rental, but otherwise everything is a go, assuming we approve it this evening. And um, Mary, I will see you on Saturday to pick up my plants. <laughs> Excellent. I can't wait. I'm getting a flowering current. Um, before we get too far into our plant and yard, yard plans, I want to let you know that PPS does not have school tomorrow. It is a teacher planning day. So be aware kids are going to be out and about where you will not ex normally expect them on a Friday during the school year. Also, there are 16 new trees at Woodmere Elementary out on the playground. They had a depave project. And so now kind of circling the asphalt area and more out around the field, um, they planted 16 new trees that will grow to provide shade over that big area and help with some of that heat issues, uh, some of the heat issues we have. 
All right, I have several announcements. I will try to move through them quickly. I know I'm going to go fast on these. Links will be in the chat. Thank you, Kim Hill. And remember, you can access this slideshow and the links document in our public records. All right, Russell at the Community Center asked that I invite neighbors to join Impact Northwest as they remove rose bushes and construct large raised beds. And they're going to plant them with food and plant starts. And the roses, excuse me, the roses that get pulled out will also be up for grabs. Tentatively scheduled for nine to three on April 20th. And if you'd like to be part of that, you need to email Russell and RSVP. Uh, update on the Charter Commission's proposed changes since this affect us, affects us all as Portlanders. This is the proposal that is now up. Uh, there will be a link in the chat where you can read more. The um, commission is proposing these three big changes of uh, ranked choice voting, new geographic districts, expanding the city council to 12 members, and um, changing the city council to setting policy and the mayor to run citywide operations with the help of a city administrator. So those, um, the city attorney's office is now gonna draft those amendments. So follow up on that and learn more because we are gonna be asked to make decisions about that in November. A reminder that your Portland art tax of $35 per adult is due April 18th, and that that art tax goes to um, help fund elementary school art and music teachers, so. And our public art for the Errol Heights Park. Oh yes, yeah, that's true, that public art we're gonna see soon, that beautiful um, sculpture, right, Pam? Uh, yes, art? yes, I think they gave us 85,000 for the uh, artwork. Awesome. So we're going to see some of that tax money come right back into our neighborhood. Um, also, there is an advisory body for the Joint Office of Homeless Services. The application to serve on that just opened, and it's only open for 14 days. So if you are interested in being a member of that, you can apply at that link. Uh, one more quick update here, Portland Street Response is now available citywide, so we can, they were already in our neighborhood, but now they're all over. So. Big announcement for BDNA, next thing on our agenda. I'm going to pause for a sec before I move on. Any questions about that huge flurry of community announcements? Okay. And a reminder to keep yourselves muted if you can, because sometimes feedback comes through the mic. So if you're not the speaker, make sure you're muted. Um, all right. PDNA elections happen every May at our annual meeting. A board member attends 10 monthly board meetings a year. These ones here held the first Thursday of every month from 7 to 9 p.m. Board members are also generally asked to volunteer at events, on committees, or for other board duties. So, for example, um, Lynn is the treasurer, so we are not expecting her to volunteer at every event. She's already doing a whole lot. Um, you can also you can take on special projects, things like that. The other thing is discuss and vote on neighborhood issues, appoint committees as needed, and work on projects pertaining to Brentwood, Darlington, and the surrounding region. Um, who's eligible? Pretty much everybody who's in the neighborhood. Anyone who lives, owns a business or property, goes to school, works, worships, or recreates in Brentwood, Darlington is eligible to join. And those elections will be held on May 5th. That's our next board meeting. Um, we have four elected officers, the chair, the vice chair, the secretary, and the treasurer, and one elected committee leader, which is the land use chair. The chair is responsible for presiding over meetings, doing the agenda, generally representing the board and neighborhood when necessary. Um, the vice chair, which we currently don't have one, hold on one moment, I have to. Apologies, I have a little kiddo knocking. 
Um, I'm going to go ahead and pause mute for a sec and deal with my in, small invader while you read this. Give me one moment. Apologies, neighbors. Thanks for being patient. The perils of uh, meetings from home. Oh, sorry. Um, any questions about those positions? We have the chair, the vice chair, the secretary, the treasurer, and the land use chair. And this information is also up on our website. It is the um, pinned post at the top. And there's even more about other ways to join or to serve if you don't want to be on the board. Um, our board has a minimum of five and a cap of, I think, 21. Um, not that we've ever hit 21, but we got to stop somewhere. Any questions before I move on from elections? All right. I hope everyone joins us next month. And where you will join us is going to be up for discussion. Derek, I'm going to turn this over to you. Okay. I think I've got myself unmuted. Um, so I think, um, I don't know, I wanted to talk to all board members um, and everyone else that's on this meeting about uh, how do people feel about maybe meeting in person next month? Um, feel free to. Go ahead and uh, raise your hand, virtual hands, board members, or your physical hands if you can't find your virtual hands. I see uh, Gail. Yeah, and neighbors, you can have opinions too on this. Please do. Stephanie and then Kim DeLeo. Um, well, I'll be leaving, but I, I love the idea of returning to in-person meetings. Uh, just wanted to um, tell you that there is a new law in Oregon that requires public bodies to make their meetings open for people by phone, video, or another electronic or virtual method, much like during the pandemic. Um, it also requires public bodies to take testimony electronically if it's allowed in person. So even if BDNA holds uh, meetings in person, there still has to be a virtual aspect that allows people to join from other locations. So it's the law now, uh, just wanted to. You know Stephanie, that. Is, are they have they funded that in some manner or <laughs> what do you mean I yeah mean, are they going to pay for it i mean are they going to give us money to do that or resources or well i th i think that we have that different public bodies have computers and and uh okay. can make this happen i uh, i i don't think it should be too difficult right i just um have the meeting joined by Zoom and have it there. Um, people right. from outside join via Zoom, and then the uh, meeting itself is a Zoom partner, I would say. And um, so we would, it, so, it sounds like we need somebody to, to run with that because I'm not able, I'm still learning, with, well, I'm still so struggling with technology. Well, Chelsea knows how to do that kind of thing. She's really good with technology. But anyway, if you want to look it up, it's House Bill 2560. Gotcha. So, okay. but, so it can be in person. It just has to have that virtual aspect to it. Right. Okay. Thank you. Kim Delio, you were the next uh, commenter. And then I think Laura Lee, you were next. Sure, I'd, uh, I'd be okay, I think, uh, with in-person if we had, you know, a decent space, I guess, barring any unforeseen spike in, you know, COVID cases, I could go with what the group feels. Laura Lee? Okay, <laughs> so I have, a, I have a couple of things to say. Um, I thank you, Stephanie, so much for that information, because that is why I raised my hand, because I was wondering if there was uh, some sort of um, something passed saying that uh, we do have to be inclusive for people that can't physically be at the meetings. And I personally think that's wonderful, because I know that for me, before COVID, 
I didn't go to the meetings because staying out till nine was too late for me and my job. Um, and, uh, but I really wanted to attend them. And then as soon as COVID hit and we went Zoom, that's when I actually started attending the Neighborhood Association meetings. So um, I think that's a positive um, addition, um, even though it might be more work for Chelsea getting that, or any of us getting that set up. Um, but my next comment is, um, do all the board members have to be there physically in person if we're gonna have Zoom as well? Because um, I'm planning on running for secretary again. Um, I will tell you my biggest hesitation is uh, the, the app lasting till nine and then especially being away from home at the community center and then coming back home because the way that I make it work now is I, as I'm on the meeting, I'm actually, you know, preparing, getting ready to go to sleep because I get up so early in the morning. So those are just some of my comments. I don't know if it's ever been um, brought to the board to perhaps have the meetings a little bit earlier uh, or at least end a little bit earlier. Um, and so I guess my second question would be is if we have some kind of hybrid um, situation set up for in-person and Zoom, uh, how do the board members, how does it stand for the board members on the attendance? Great questions, Laura Lee, uh, Lynn, and then Kim Hill. Um, I was going to suggest if, uh, if maybe people are open to having one more Zoom meeting as the for the elections, and then the new board can kind of decide how they want to run the meetings, have hybrid. I did not realize that that was the rule that Stephanie just mm -hmm. brought up. Um, but I'm kind of, even though I started the board like in person, you know, before COVID, I actually, I'm a little bit like Laura Lee that I like the, I like to be home and I like to, it's just much easier like um, to be able to just, you know, log off at nine o'clock and, and just be, I'm home. I can wind down, you know, get my evening routine. Um, so I kind of like, I prefer the Zoom meetings, but I realize that maybe not have Everybody else is in that position, uh, but it, and maybe there's a maybe we take a little vote of, of who would be in person and who would be in Zoom if that was an option. You know. Okay. Thanks, Lynn. Yeah. Uh, Kim Hill. Um, I just want to say uh, thank you so much for this opportunity to share about. Um, coming back to in-person meetings. Um, I uh, am in the same boat as Laura Lee. I get up really, really early for work and um, being able to do virtual meetings. I just wanna say in response to Stephanie, um, volunteering uh, Chelsea to um, be our technology whiz, that I really feel that that's pretty unfair to put um, one person on the hook for um, being our technology person. Um, I think it's really uh, a complex or could be somewhat complex. And I think that um, it might be a, a, a good idea to perhaps um, push out this decision a couple months so that you know maybe the new board or whoever volunteers to be that person can help um, support that process. And it's not just on our president. That's probably enough for me. Thanks, Kim. Uh, any other comments from neighbors or board members? I saw some in the chat here. Um, questions about hybrid meetings, which we just discussed. Um, Mirabai thinks we should leave it online. Uh, Gail misses us, we miss you too. Um, so let's go ahead and um, let's do a so I, I have kind of, there's there's two questions I that I think neighbors brought up was, one was, um, should we decide this or should the incoming board decide this? And um, how do we compensate with the rules that are now on there, which um, that's good to know. Um, and I, Derek, I think they will provide us just as much funding to do that as they have for translation accessibility and outreach to the neighborhood. So, um, you know, 
zero. Um, uh, I'm wondering, Chelsea, if, if there might be an up. Well, so it sounds like we're going to probably stay virtual for a while. Do you think there's an opportunity to, for a grant money to have something for this? Or if know. you would like to research and write one, absolutely. Okay. Um, I see in the chat, Kim DeLeo is suggesting that maybe we do an early social gathering instead of a meeting. Um, that could be really fun. So I, I'm seeing kind of the general vibe is um, decide this with the new board um, because that is who it will most affect. Is that um, thumbs up if you'd like to kick the can to the new board, thumbs down if you want to decide this tonight. Uh, thumbs up. Oh. And you can do a physical thumb or a virtual thumb if you can't figure it out. Because sometimes they really hide those emojis. Where's All right, so it looks like the consensus is kick the can down the road to the next board. Um, so this will be a decision that the new board members get to make in our May meeting. Does that sound good? Yes. All right. Um, any other questions or comments on this? All right, we're gonna go ahead and move forward. Um, if you can't figure out how to clear your emojis, I will go through and do that. And um, let's move on to, um, Derek, go ahead and do a quick thing on your food pantry drive. And then we're gonna um, kick it to Stephanie, who's going to do a quick land use report, and then we have a special guest coming up. And I know we're running a little behind, but we'll do our best to move quickly. Go ahead, Derek. Okay, great. Can you hear me? I'm, I'm off mute. Um, anyway, um, just to recap, I reached out to the Oregon Food Bank about doing a food, food drive for the neighborhood. And they told me that due to COVID, they're no longer collecting food, either in bags or in drums and sending it to a, like a central warehouse. And they suggested I contact my local food pantry and see what they needed. And so I did a quick search and I came up with, I found the one at uh, Lane Middle School, I think it's Sunday or Tuesday afternoons. And so I went out there and I just introduced myself and I met Eric, who's uh, kind of organizing or running that. And I started talking to him about what I was hoping to do. And he explained that actually they're just fine in the food department. A lot of people have an Oregon Trail or food stamps. And then of course, uh, food bank actually has a ton of food, but then he, then he said, what we need are these things that you can't get with uh, you know, food essentially. And so he made me a quick list and I told him I would share it with the board meeting uh, tonight. Um, and, uh, and that's kind of how we ended up with this list. So I called my food drive like a food drive plus. And um, I think I shared a flyer with everybody. Hopefully everybody saw it. Um, I see this is from the flyer. And then the other thing is, um, so I'm curious, any comments or whatnot? There's also Eric talked to me about doing a deep clean for the food bins or pantry. And um, I think I forward that to you and others, Chelsea. I saw that, but I didn't get it in, uh, up in time for my slides, apology, okay. but it yep. will be going out and we're going to have a mid-month special newsletter because there's so much good information. Okay. Um, so I'll make sure to include it there. Great. And I will share with everybody, um, you know, and again, the food drive for me, I think it's ongoing. The need is ongoing. So as I reach out to neighbors, as I kind of do uh, kind of introduce myself as a local realtor, I'm also sharing this with them so that I don't think I don't have it set up with any deadline. Uh, it's kind of open ended, and um, I'm just having people get a hold of me when they're ready to make a donation, and I'm willing to drive out and pick it up and then get it to Eric. Um, somebody could bring it to Eric, but you know, I'm I'm this is what I've just I've chosen to do is to help make this happen and pick up deliveries when they're ready from neighbors and homeowners and get it to Eric in the food pantry. Any questions? Awesome. Thanks, Derek. Um, if you have questions, comments, or donations on that, you can contact Derek and he will get you hooked up. Thanks for always looking out for our neighbors. Yeah, thank you. Um, we're going to switch the two items in our agenda because we have um, a special guest here and Stephanie has graciously suggested that we let our guest go first to be respectful of time. 
and then we'll follow it right up with the land use report. So we're going to go ahead and swap. And Jamie, if you would like the floor, it is yours. And if you have slides to present, let me know and I will make you a co-host. Well, first of all, uh, Stephanie, thank you so much. And as uh, a, a planner and an AICP, uh, I actually really appreciate the presentation you're gonna be giving, um, but really appreciate you um, bumping the time around. So let me share something, um, and I didn't have slides, but I do wanna share the district map. We've got a really great map. And part of the, the there's a lot of confusion that folks have over the new congressional districts. Um, as many of you may know, uh, last year, Oregon got a new congressional district and then the lines were redrawn. And so if I've, yeah, so I don't have access to sharing, but I put the, the, um, the I'm link. working on it. Give me one minute. It's just fighting me on making you a co-host. So you'll see that pop up short. Cool. Thank you. And, uh, just wanted to give you all a sense of the new district. So, um, anyway, the, the old the new congressional, fifth congressional district now extends actually from the, the Selwood Bridge and then going into Selwood actually kicks up a little bit um, into your neighborhood area. And then it goes all the way down to, um, in, uh, to Sun River in Central Oregon. So it is 53% of the district is new. Um, and do we got, okay, let me, let me do this real quickly and I will give you a quick share on the map so you can you can see what the new map looks like. Um, and when we do this in person meetings, it's always like trying to get the laptop to talk to the <laughs> here to talk to the <laughs> can you all can you all see this? The full district. So the link actually shows all congressional maps, uh, which is really helpful. It actually does others as well. Um, but the the new newly drawn fifth congressional district, and I'll, I'll zero in on this part up here in just a second, now includes a little bit of Multnomah, uh, a chunk of Clackamas, a chunk of Marion County east of I-5, almost all of Lynn, a little bit of Jefferson, and into the bulk of, of Deschutes County. So let me just narrow in real quickly so if you guys could see a more familiar area. So, um, so now it's, again, the, the newly drawn district extends here and then pops up here and goes around. And so that area should look somewhat familiar, but that's, uh, that's in your, um, that's in the link. So check that out at your leisure. And I believe in the past you've been, uh, represented by Earl Blumenauer. Is that correct? Okay, so good news, bad news. Um, you're no longer represented by Earl Blumenauer. The, that's the bad news. The good news is there is an opportunity to have uh, a very like-minded Democrat represent you. And let me even just say beyond party politics, someone who is uh, fair-minded, cares about community, and is uh, committed to community service. Um, there are two of us in this race, uh, myself, my wife and I live in central Oregon, uh, a little bit north of Bend, we live in a rural area. Um, I'll run through a little bit of my background, uh, but it's essentially myself and Kurt Schrader. Uh, let me just say that um, if this were Blumenauer's district, I would not be running. I'm a huge Blumenauer fan. And um, we just, um, there's a lot of concern about Kurt Schrader representing the district from folks in your neck of the woods up in the metro area all through central Oregon as well. So just a little bit of background on, uh, on myself. Um, I'm, I'm an emergency response coordinator and attorney um, and a small business owner. My background is in um, engineering, civil engineering and city and regional planning. Uh, my focus in water law was on, um, I'm sorry, my focus in law was water law and Indian law. I was raised by a single mom, um, paid my way through college and law school, uh, started out in the Midwest when I was nine. My mom took a teaching job in, in Tanzania, so spent a chunk of my childhood in East Africa before returning to the States, moving to Southern Oregon. So I'm a, a proud a graduate of public schools in Southern Oregon. I... Um, uh, after getting my degrees in engineering and planning, I began my public service over in Bosnia and Kosovo just after the war. It's similar to what we're seeing right now in the Ukraine. Um, 
after the war ends, we're going to see that the reconstruction needed. And I worked for a humanitarian organization uh, back in the day. I had come out as a young adult, and back in the day, if you were out, you couldn't serve in the military. So I worked for the International Rescue Committee, um, managing the reconstruction of schools and hospitals over in post-war Bosnia and Kosovo, also designed water and sanitation systems in Kosovo. When I wanted to come back to the States, the IRC asked me to run their refugee resettlement office in the, in the Bay Area. And so I did that for several years before working as a planner, uh, also as a, a city planner and a regional planner for a, um, a regional water agency. I also served in an office. I was elected to uh, the Santa Clara City Council and served for eight years in that capacity. After termed out, wanted to come home to Oregon, came back, got my law degree, and have worked in, um, in local government um, in, as a, a city manager, also as an interim city manager. Last year, uh, I spent about half the year as an interim city manager in talent. The city had lost a third of its homes to the wildfires in 2020. The very real environmental crisis that we're in now, we're seeing wildfires decimate so much of our state. And I helped the city get back on its feet, make sure that government was responsive to the needs of those impacted. And that's especially those most impacted in that case were seniors on fixed income and farm workers. And so having responsive government, uh, making sure that we were addressing the needs of the community and protecting our community as we recovered and rebounded was really key. Um, my, a couple of the hats I'm wearing right now, I'm actually working on a, re, um, a model affordable housing project, helping to uh, establish affordable home ownership housing. So people who have been in cycles of generational poverty can build up that equity. And, um, and then also working with the state in emergency preparedness. Uh, are a couple of things I'm doing in addition to, to running for Congress right now. I serve uh, in Central Oregon, I serve on a regional uh, education service district board. And then also, I actually currently represent you on OWEB. I'm a member at large, uh, was appointed by the governor and confirmed by the Senate. OWEB is the Oregon Watershed Enhancement Board, and it uh, helps to protect our, our natural resources and working lands. Uh, I think I saw something on your website about um, your watershed council. So OWEB is very involved in, in watershed councils as well. Um, I, I'm running essentially because we're, we're in a time of crisis and uh, I'm not confident in the, the person who is a city member of Congress, uh, who's often compared to Joe Manchin, um, but is someone who wants to represent this newly drawn district. Um, and so the, the crises that we're seeing right now are everything from the challenges our working families are facing, the crisis, uh, the, the climate crisis, and then also, of course, our democracy being under attack. Um, oh, what are the other things from my background I do want to mention, because it ties in very importantly to this race, is in 2018, uh, when we had the old congressional districts, the old second congressional district used to be everything east of the Cascades in Southern Oregon. It was the seventh largest congressional district in the country and the most conservative in here in Oregon. Um, it was the time when Greg Walden was trying to take away our health care, and so I ran against him in that race. It was an arguably impossible race. There was an 18% advantage, 18 point advantage for Republicans, uh, but, but we couldn't leave it unchallenged with him going after our healthcare. And I actually had the largest voter swing of any congressional race in the entire country that year, right here in Oregon. And one uh, had a 10 point swing, 10% swing, brought a lot of uh, crossover voters because we were just talking about the challenges that we're facing. And that's really what folks across the political spectrum are talking about. So I'm hearing in the field and, and what we know uh, from before. And this is something that really bridges the urban rural divide. And then also is, is the focus we need to move beyond the noise of politics to actual solutions. Uh, some of the solutions that I really want to focus on are um, making sure we have affordable housing, uh, health care, child care, investments in education from pre-K through the professional track, whether that's uh, trade school, uh, college, um, and, and making those types of investment for our working families. I'm really proud to be support endorsed by a lot of unions, a lot of working families, teachers, nurses, frontline workers, um, as well as, as elected folks throughout the district. Just in terms of a contrast with myself and, um, and Kurt Schrader, uh, so here's things that he voted against that I would have voted for. So the Build Back Better agenda is a complete package that involved both a, an investment in our both our physical and our social infrastructure. 
Um, he was one of the handful of Democrats who who um, split it up and then also gutted a lot of important programs out of it, including some of those priorities I mentioned earlier. The Emergency Housing Relief Protections Act of 2020. So during the pandemic, when people were getting thrown out of their homes, I would have voted for that. He was, I think, the only Democrat to vote against it. Uh, the American Recovery Act with the, the stimulus checks, uh, um, again, that was during a time of crisis. I would have voted to make that investment in our families, especially those who are most struggling. Uh, lowering prescription drug prices. And um, he actually was the deciding vote in committee to kill um, the, uh, a, a law that would have uh, had Medicare negotiate prescription drug prices, all prescription drug prices. Um, so he's reframing that and saying that very differently. If you, when you get flyers from him, if, you, if you're on number five or seven or whatever, um, it, the facts uh, speak differently. And so we're happy to get that information to you. Um, he voted twice against the PRO Act, the Protect the Right to Organize. I would have voted for it at the time. Uh, he voted against the DREAMER Act in 2010. Um, and also even against, uh, he's voted against raising the federal minimum wage. It's something we've done here in Oregon that would enable people to, to um, get, get paid for their work and, and working families get back on their feet. Um, he even, you know, he even voted against a bill uh, preventing active duty service members from being harassed by debt collectors. I mean, a, a, a sense of protecting and, and supporting those in uniform. Uh, so I would have voted for all of those. Uh, he does another distinction and, and some of his votes follow this is uh, I don't take corporate PAC money. I never have since I was first elected in 2004, I believe in, um, in representing people and our numbers, uh, we won't raise as much as he does because he's taking the corporate PAC money, but we've got a lot of volunteers. We're raising enough and we've got um, thousands and thousands of donors uh, who are actually individuals here in Oregon who are raising those funds. Um, he gets money from not only big pharma and fossil fuel companies, but from the Koch brothers as well. On addressing the climate crisis, again, some distinctions, I would have voted for the climate change uh, protections uh, that, uh, that was in the infrastructure bill and in, in Build Back Better. Those were programs that he carved out and got out, got out of, of the infrastructure bill. Um, and, and in protecting our, our democracy, um, you know, I think it's everything from voting rights to the right to organize, anti-corruption, um, and then also not having pay to play politics. Um, he, he's gotten a lot of uh, press recently for his stock trading and he 1.1 million last year. Um, there's a bipartisan bill that's been proposed on banning congressional stock trading. He won't sign on to it. I would co-sponsor it and sign on to it because you need a level playing field and those representing uh, people need to, need to be accountable to people and not kind of taking money from those they're also supposed to be regulating. Um, so those are some of the distinctions in terms of how he voted, how I would vote. Again, my priorities is really to make sure we're helping families get through the COVID economy, get our economy back on its feet and really investing in people, um, addressing the climate crisis, everything from the trajectory we're on. So in making sure the, the subsidies are not going to the fossil fuel companies, but into that uh, renewable energy and building that infrastructure, as well as uh, preparing people emergency preparedness, which is work I'm doing right now for the state. And then also that, that recovery that that helps people who have uh, dealt with uh, environmental crisis. Those are all top priorities for me. Um, I'm really proud to be endorsed, like I said, by a lot of working families, um, also by folks like uh, Mark Gamba, the mayor of Milwaukee, who uh, actually ran in this race pre pre previously is endorsing me, uh, Karn Power, former governor Barbara Roberts, former secretary of state, uh, Bill Bradbury, an environmental champion, Senator Elizabeth Warren, um, and we've got just really a phenomenal list of uh, national, state, and local organizations who are supporting me in this race. And then um, something else that's very noteworthy, and it's because it's unprecedented, is four of the counties, so um, uh, Deschutes, Lynn, Marion, and Cl including Clackamas, where, where Kurt has, has represented for years, uh, the county Democratic parties have all decided to endorse me in the primary. It's unprecedented that, that happened, but there's such a there's so much frustration with his uh, his statements last uh, in the last couple of years and his his recent votes. 
um, that I've got that support. And then even folks who've supported him in the past who essentially say they're even personal friends of them, but they just say he's he's really lost touch with with our district. Um, I want to I want to bring that focus of uh, taking care of our community, being responsive to our community. I'd love to serve you all in Congress. Uh, I'm really proud of my ability to bridge the urban rural divide. Like I said, my wife and I live in a rural area, but also in urban areas as well. I've served in urban areas and there's a lot of potential, especially around economic development uh, that we can be looking at for urban areas as well. Um, so my website's jamiefororegon.com. That's kind of me in a nutshell and what I want to accomplish on your behalf in Congress. And with that, I'd, I'd be happy to answer any questions that folks may have um, about me, my background, priorities, the race, et cetera. All right, um, thank you so much, Jamie. We have a question from Stephanie. Uh, Jamie, thank you so much for your presentation. It's just been super inspiring. I feel like I've appreciated every single word. Uh, I had a question that's not um, precisely in the category that you were suggesting questions could be in, but I want to know how does a congressperson in a new district get going once, once you're there? Does, will Earl Blumenauer, for example, be there to um, you know help? I don't know. I don't know enough about what how you work in Congress, but I would like to know how you get going. Yeah. No. Absolutely. Um, so I um, have you know good relationships with Earl and others. So it's a combination of things. I mean, you 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 bring in your own brand, but also you you get mentored by those around you. Um, I so I know uh, members of the of the the Oregon Congressional District. Um, I also know folks uh, in California when I worked down there um, and, and there's folks down there as well who would be able to provide mentorship to be able to, you know, kind of how the, uh, how things work in the building. Um, there's, there's that piece of it that I would, and I'm a fast learner, so I'd be learning from others. But the other thing that I wanna do and something I wanna bring to the team is uh, help with the ability to message and communicate across the urban rural divide. Because one of the things that I have found, um, and this dates back to the work I did in 2018, is when you're talking about the core issues, um, you know, ones I mentioned before, I, it's, it, it, there's so much commonality, so much common ground to face, but Democrats, and I'm, I'm a, a lifelong Democrat because I believe in caring for people on the planet, Democrats have failed to show up and message effectively in rural areas. One of the reasons why I was relatively so successful in, um, in 2018 with that, that 10 point swing and including people who are Republicans who wanted me to print signs Republicans from a cloud skinner and put that up in their lawn because they were, they're saying that, you know, you're talking common sense. You're, you're talking about the things we care about. So in my language, I stay away from uh, buzzwords. I talk about ideas. You know, what I found is regardless of party affiliation, we all want to put a roof over our head and food on our table. We want opportunities for our kids. We want health care for our family when they're sick. We don't want our homes burned down. By focusing on the issues, by showing up, by, by communicating with folks on the ground, that helps to get that messaging out. And then by helping Democrats do that more effectively in rural areas, we will also build up some of the, the groundswell and pressure to move forward on these concept of everyone having access to health care, of some of these things we haven't been able to get across the finish line in, in, in legislation. And then working with my colleagues in Congress, I'm happy to sit down and have coffee with, with everyone and we'll work very hard to build those relationships. What I found when I served on, on the Santa Clara City Council, often in the minority politically, is you can learn to be effective and you develop a toolbox of, of skills by getting to know your colleagues, knowing their motivations and helping to show how your ideas are, uh, are, will serve their constituents as well. And that's how you get the ideas forward. You don't go in you know, yelling at folks or telling people what they should be doing. You, you figure out how to work effectively with folks. And those are skills I have. And that's, that's where I think, um, Democrats could do a better job on ideas that we have a majority of folks agree with, but we haven't been able to get the legislation across the finish line. And so what we sometimes hear and what we've heard from my opponent is, oh, I, you know, um, it's a it's a mixed district, so we're just going to have to water down solutions. Well, conservative Republicans don't want watered down solutions. When we're talking about the climate crisis. Now, they may call it something slightly different. We use different language in rural areas. 
but it's the same crisis. And so there is high level of motivation when we can communicate effectively for getting those things done. That's what I want. That's one of the things I want to bring to Congress. Okay, thank you so much. That was terrific. Any other questions for Jamie? All right, Jamie, I have a totally unrelated question. Which Southern Oregon school did you graduate from? <laughs> uh, Ashland High School. All right, I'm a comment, so had to Okay. Ask. <laughs> yeah, we, we uh, yeah, just actually, I was talking about Crater just um, just the other day, but uh, yeah, here's here's a little thing, and I've I've been um, this is really cheesy, so and I know folks in in metro area like sports, but uh, forgive me for the cheesiness of this, but one of the things I'm most proud of is I still hold the Ashland 800 meter track record. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, so so I that's uh. That. Except I was on the uh, the uh, championship equestrian drill team because you know oh, that's nice. what you get to do in rural schools is ride horses for your sport. Nice. Um, but that Crater School of Business was a great thing, and I hope they're still doing the small schools down there. Well, and to the point of schools, there's so much, so many investments, and so much support we've been giving to our education. That's a whole other conversation. But from pre-K to K through 12 to also post-secondary, uh, I had. I'm very proud to say, uh, not only endorsed by the Oregon Education Association, I actually I got 93% of that endorsement process because of a commitment to, to education and educators. So a lot of work to be done there. Again, finding common solutions to make sure we're investing in our kids in the future. Awesome. Thank you so much, Jamie. If you have more questions for Jamie, um, check out the website linked there in the chat and reach out to her campaign and anything else? I'll just say my per, my email is jamie at jamiefororegon.com. So don't hesitate to send me an email if you have any follow-up questions. And then lastly, I do want to make the formal ask. I would love to get your uh, endorsement, your support. I'd love to get your vote for this race. Um, I, can, I can promise you this. I will work incredibly hard. Uh, back in 2018, I drove the equivalent of 15 times across the country, traveling all around the old CD2. Um, I will work very hard for you and your families. I will uh, I work to get this important legislation done to care for our for your community or for your families, for our state. Uh, I also work very hard to make you proud. Oh, thank you. Thank, thank you, Jamie. Jamie. Uh, All right. Thanks for your time. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right, neighbors. Um, our, we're going to move on to our um, land use report. So Stephanie, I'll turn the floor over to you and um, we'll just kind of shimmy our agenda a little bit tonight, folks. So, um, well, or do you wanna do a break first? Can we take a little break. Sure. Yeah. All right, let's, um, let's do a five minute break and I'm gonna link, or actually Kim's gonna link in the chat. There are three bands up for consideration that we've been sent for our summer concert in the park. So if you'd like to kind of preview those bands, um, those links will be in the chat. And while we're having our break, you can take a 30 second listen to each of them. Um, and thanks Kim for linking those in the chat. We'll be back, let's say um, 8.08, .08. we'll go Hawaiian. Okay. All right, you. folks, see you in a few minutes. All right, Stephanie, go ahead with our land use committee report. Okay, very fine. Uh, I will um, go over several uh, items. Uh, first is uh, a reprise of the Moose Lodge meeting that was held on March 29 of this year. It was organized by Adunia Markham, who uh, may be your next land use chair, I think. She's considering this. Um, the meeting was called primarily to, for it was an appeal to Brentwood Darlington residents to gather to discuss uh, gun violence and street speeding. Uh, there was a panel of people uh, consist uh, of people from uh, Mount Scott Arlita and a, a representative from um, Joanne Hardesty's office. Uh, the um, the panel uh, presented. Um, uh, a detailed picture of what what people in together with Pivot did in Mount Scarda Lita to reduce gun violence in a prescribed area uh, near um, near the park 
and near the intersection or around the intersection of uh, 72nd and Woodstock. Uh, the newspapers gave a lot of prominence to the big uh, orange barrels placed in streets to make it difficult to um, speed in and out of the street shooting. But there was a lot more to what, um, what was done in the neighborhood. Uh, for example, uh, there was a church parking lot that had been um, a, a gathering place for autos and people who were then uh, bent on uh, violence. And so I believe that it's now what, they got it locked up, so it can't be a gathering place anymore. And they increased uh, the lighting in the park and the number of rangers working in the park. And there was a nuisance store there that I guess was selling cigarettes and liquor and so on to underage kids. And so it was a, a magnet for trouble. Uh, so th they worked on these kinds of problems and put you know, these semi barriers into the streets and it resulted in a marked decrease in the uh, amount of gun violence that they had been experiencing, which was considerable. Um, and it's, but it's still, that violence is still continuing in Portland. And even as the panel was speaking, there was a um, shooting incident up uh, just outside this er treated area, um, it's north of the, the Mount Scott Park up there. But uh, they did, they were able to reduce gun violence in this prescribed area and cautioned that the, the steps that they took cannot just be applied wholesale to another neighborhood. Every neighborhood is unique and would require a special approach. Uh, and so anyway, the uh, panel encouraged um, uh, troubled residents to reach out to Hardesty's office and to Peabot for help uh, with um, with possibly you know, treating their neighborhood uh, as well. So uh, that was one topic and there were people there who were very concerned about gun violence, we all are. Then Josh Roll, who is a resident of Foster Powell spoke to the audience. He is proposing what he calls tactical urbanism, which is, um, uh, finding ways for residents to act on the ground themselves to stop another form of danger, which is uh, speeding on our residential streets. And he proposes to work with Peabot to devise a number of strategies that neighbors could um, uh, take on themselves and, and implement at their own expense, but these would not be very expensive. Um, it would be doable. So he is looking for people who uh, would be able to carry out a demonstration project in each of several neighborhoods. And uh, we're, we're um, uh, hoping to talk with some people in a few days at a meeting that he is, um, uh, that he will preside at. We haven't chosen a date or exact time yet, but um, we're hoping that we can end up with a, a demonstration project here in, um, in Brentwood, Darlington. Uh, examples of what can be done are to put, um, uh, say, you know, those big metal horse troughs, uh, you can put them on the street in certain ways that narrow the street and also make it visually more difficult to, um, uh, to drive down, which forces people to slow. Um, you can put ropes across the street, big marine cables that people have to drive over. That's another uh, thing. You can treat intersections in ways that force people to slow down when they're making turns and as so they enter streets um, much more slowly than normally would if, um, if there weren't these corner abutments that, that make turning difficult. So there's a whole range of things that people can do that don't cost very much. So working with Josh and we're hoping that we will be able to find a group of residents who will work together and create a demonstration project with the blessing of Peabot and the assistance of Peabot. The ultimate goal is to have a set of Peabot approved um, uh, tactics that residents can use on their streets. 
And um, so that that's what we're aiming at uh, because right now, you know, the police cannot stop, be out, you know, prowling the streets and, and stopping the speeders on all the streets in Portland. And it's a, it's a problem everywhere throughout the city. And we're down many officers and Peabody itself is focusing on the high crash corridors, not on little residential streets where children are playing and people are trying to walk and scoot and bike and so on. So there was some description, uh, some discussion about that. And then an unexpected um, topic came up, which was the need for a place to gather, a center where people can do things together and meet to talk and so on. In other words, a community center, which was very um, uh, timely because BDNA has been working on the problem of the Brentwood Darlington Community Center. And we'll discuss that later in the meeting, but it was very interesting that it, um, that it came up, that it was uh, important uh, equally there with, um, with uh, street safety and with gun violence. So it was a very successful meeting, I thought, and uh, very interesting. And I think that we will have more in the future if Dunya uh, has anything to say about it, and I hope so. Um, okay, so on another subject entirely, um, at our last meeting, we were discussing the homelessness problem, and um, and I thought it would be really, oh, Laura Lee, I see your hand up, yes? Um, I was curious about um, when you're when you were talking about finding uh, uh, community residents in Brentwood Darlington to participate in that project. Uh -huh. um, how how will people be able to voice if they want to participate, or um, what's the outreach going to be uh, so that we're aware that this project might happen um, well, and be able to focus on the main streets that we need to. Okay, it's been discussed in the land use meetings. It's been the land use uh, newsletters, and it has been um, uh, uh, it's discussed at this meeting uh, that I just named. But if you uh, write to bdlanduse at gmail.com and you want to, you're interested in participating in such a project, um, we'll put you on the list and 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 make sure that you get a, a get invitations to meetings to discuss these things. But we've tried to, to reach out to people. So it, it hasn't been a silent sort of process. Um, so just, 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 yeah, just email me, Laura Lee, and we'll get you on the um, email list, okay? Okay, next subject. Um, at the last meeting, we were discussing homelessness and I thought it would be really interesting to have someone come and talk to us about um, the, the systemic causes of homelessness. Um, so we talk a lot about what to do with the problem right now, but if, if we could solve some of the root causes, um, that might be really helpful as well. And uh, I was going to, um, try to see if I could find an economist because there seems to me that the roots are, are in the economy. But um, uh, Chelsea and Chelsea said, okay, find me an economist. And I set out to do that, but I, I found something else that I think is better. I learned that uh, Portland State University has a research bureau called the Homelessness Research and Action Collaborative. And uh, I wrote to them and asked if they could provide a speaker for us, and they can. And so um, we got an email, and I will share this with you, Chelsea. We got an email uh, from uh, this collaborative uh, saying we would love to provide a speaker for an upcoming meeting. Um, our director, so this would be the director, this is great. Uh, Marisa Zapata said she would be available they're asking whether next month, which I know is election time, but would that work? And, um, but they may be, that speaker may be able to come later as well. Uh, so. I was waiting to reply to that till we answered the question of in-person vir versus virtual meetings, but I do think we can fit them in next month in the second half of our meeting. 
elections really don't usually take that long. Okay. So um, we could probably even get them in towards the middle of the meeting. So I can respond back with our options now that we know we're going to remain virtual next month and we okay, can get that scheduled. Okay, great. Okay, thank you. That should be really interesting. And then Kim has her hand up. Yes. Kim Hill. Yes, Stephanie. I just want to share a comment. Um, I, um, I did not have time to search for a speaker for homelessness. And I'm so delighted that you were able to locate someone. That is really amazing. But I really have a comment about the languaging that you're that you use and and then I've heard when we talk about homelessness um, we talk about problems and um, I think it's really important to remember that it is a complex issue and that folks who are homeless are human beings and deserve um, to have supportive and um, dignified language. I know that it is a very challenging issue and that our neighborhood has a, a lot of examples of folks who are unhoused. Um, and I'm just delighted that we'll have someone who can come and talk to our, um, our neighborhood association and maybe provide some, um, some color about the complexities of, of this particular subject. Okay, well, that's that's the whole intent. So uh, this seems like a, a good place to, from which to get a speaker. So we'll see. Any other questions about our speaker coming up? Okay. All right, moving on to another subject. Stephanie, um, there is another hand up. It looks like um, Black Futures Farm has their hand up. Oh, oh, I'm I, sorry, I missed I, your hand there in the list. Go ahead. I couldn't see it. Yeah, that's okay. Hi, Stephanie. Hi, everybody. Hey, hi, Malcolm. Um, first of all, I want to say thank you for being such a supportive <clears throat> group of people. And we really love being in the BD neighborhood and hope to continue to contribute to the overall health of the community um, and become um, better neighbors with all of you. <clears throat> Second thing is, um, I have no problem with what you said, Stephanie, and I say this is somebody who had been has been unhoused, homeless, several times in my life, um, including right before when I got to Portland, I was basically homeless, and um, <laughs> Mirabai is over there editorializing, and um, Mirabai also, we, we both have experienced a great deal of homelessness and addiction, and we're both in recovery, and I will tell you this, this is the main problem in our city, with homelessness is rampant drug addiction and horrible mental health issues and the roots of those problems are societal and the fact that society we don't have a cohesive society of people who care who genuinely care about one another and so people fall through the cracks they become addicted to drugs uh the meth the meth and o the combination of a meth and opioid addiction has produced people who are drug addicts like we have never ever seen before you know I'm in my 50s and my personal addiction was to cocaine um and so I was a classy dope fiend but uh people who are um that was a joke y'all can laugh uh people who um are addicted to like the like uh heroin and methamphetamines particularly this new like bathtub ptp meth I just get so kind of single-minded are like on a whole other level that I have never ever seen before. And it is a horrible health crisis for this entire country. And it's, you know, like it, using more polite language does not address the urgency or the root of this problem that has people like camping out in the middle of the street. A lady had a baby downtown in the middle of the street and on the sidewalk the other day. There's campsites all along the freeway and in the middle of it, like it's horrible. And so we can, you know, we can couch it in like more polite language, but we we should be cursing to address the the the, the level of horror that we exist. We should be using F-bombs all the time. This shit is fucking ridiculous. Yeah. 
and it is a horrible crisis that we have to face. And I don't care how you talk about it. I care what we do about it. Mm -hmm. So that's what I wanted to say, because, you know, I, I just wanted to make that point. Like the language that we use is secondary to the approach that we take. Okay, thank, thank you, Malcolm. Yeah, I just, I wanted to understand some of the basics behind the whole scene. Yes, okay, the drug, the drug thing. Yes, the uncaring society. Yeah, I think there's a, a whole lot to be aware of. And um, so that was um, the whole point of searching for, searching for information. So thank you very much. Yeah, I appreciate what you, what you've just said. It's very graphic. And yes, it's, it's horrible. Yeah, we've got to, we can't stand by and do nothing. Okay. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take a little pause there because um, I want to check in with our agenda. We're running a little behind. I really appreciate this discussion. It's awesome. And I think it's great that we have, um, that we can all talk about this as neighbors um, and be kind to each other. But I'm also going to do a shameless plug for the event that we held on Tuesday that we partnered with Creston Kenilworth and some PTAs on where the candidates for county commissioner chair all spoke. And this was a major topic of um, the, the discussion. So I'm going to post a link in the chat that is not quite live yet. The video is currently uploading from Tuesday, but um, if, if this is one of your, your passions and, um, a, a, I mean, it concerns all of us, but if it's something that you're passionate about or you really want to hear more on, check out that video once it's done uploading and um, because it's a major topic and they go into a lot of information about the health crisis behind um, a lot of our homeless crisis. So just putting that out there um, and let's speed through and we'll be quick. I think we're still doing all right. Go ahead. Okay, thank you, Chelsea. I do want to see that video because I was not able to um, attend the forum. And I will just um, uh, touch on two more topics real fast um, and then we can um, move on. I still want to discuss the Brentwood Darlington Community Center. Just wanted to remind everybody of something that we've discussed in the past, but not for quite a while. We've got a new apartment building that's going to be built on 52nd Avenue at Cooper. 25 units, um, the permit has not been approved yet. It's been a long two year process, but it's about to be approved soon. And so we will have 25 additional units of housing here in Brentwood Darlington. Um, it just recently, um, I found out about it by accident a couple of years ago because I, I was searching the tables of the published by the, um, the Bureau of Development Services. And I saw that there was an application of early assistance intake for this uh, building. But after that, there were no public notices or anything uh, because it was completely within, it was completely in compliance with the zoning. Um, and I remember we did talk about it at a board meeting. Um, somebody wanted to know why we, it was all of, all units and no room for shops or, or services you know, downstairs. And the answer is that in that, kind of zoning, you can go all residential and you do not have to put in um, downstairs or floor level uh, space for commercial enterprises. I know we would all love to have more shops and services here, but um, it, it may be that the neighborhood just still cannot support um, the demand. You know, uh, Marty Stockton commented a year or so ago and People were saying, why can't we have a Safeway? And she said, this neighborhood does not have the, um, the monetary means to support a Safeway. We, one of the reasons that we are a landing spot for many uh, um, different populations is because we are still relatively uh, 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 low, low rent and, and lower house price pricing than elsewhere in the city. Um, and, but that means though that we, People live here who do not, who are, we're not rich. That's what I'm trying to get at. It's, it's, uh, we can't really support a supermarket uh, at this, at this time. So, people who are building apartment buildings right now are not including commercial space 
for this reason that if they, they know they wouldn't be able to fill the spaces. They wouldn't be able to make money on that. But in any case, there's a new apartment building coming, Cooper and 52nd, it's called Cooper 52. Um, and uh, I think it will be great to have some more housing in our neighborhood. Any questions? Oh, but there was one other thing that I wanted to um, bring up. And this was something that Chelsea brought up at one time. Um, when um, there was a little notice recently about this apartment building and, and some neighbors nearby were near where it's going to be built were very upset that they hadn't heard about it before, even though it has been discussed in land use and at the board meeting here. Um, Chelsea, a while ago last year, had the idea that, that Brentwood Darlington should have a community bulletin board where stuff like this gets posted and uh, from many different uh, quarters and people can refer uh, to, I think it's a great idea. I don't know how to bring that about, but something like this, a new apartment building could go up on the community bulletin board and then people learn to check in there and they see, oh, look, look at this, this is coming. And um, it's something that is more, um, it, it, it is a more um, accessible visually, I, I would say, uh, than Nextdoor or some of the other social media platforms where there are, it's just posts. It's just a list of what's going on, no commentary. And um, so I'm hoping that someday that can happen, but we would need a, um, a partner to, or, or get somebody to do that. Maybe impact, I have no idea, but I still think it's a really, really good idea to have a community bulletin board. And finally, uh, let me just say real fast on TGM, <clears throat> the update right now is they're on track to begin drafting the plan. Uh, at the moment, they would like people to look at the report that has been posted on the results of their pin, up, pin it exercise. You know, hundreds of comments were posted on the pin it map and you can view them if you go to Lower Southeast Rising and then click on documents, you can get to the Pinnet report uh, and you can see all of the different things that people had to say about um, life here in Brentwood Darlington. It's really quite fascinating. But it was interesting that in Brentwood Darlington, 73% of the comments had to do with street safety or public safety of some kind, not gun violence, but people speeding, lack of sidewalks, lack of crossings, um, uh, crazy signs, whatever. So that was clearly, clearly a big uh, part of the, um, the, the concerns of uh, local residents who posted on PINIT. So that's Lower Southeast Rising, click on documents and then look for the PINIT report about midway down. Okay, I'm gonna stop now so that we can get on with other things now. Any questions about Pinnit? No, okay. All right. I'll I uh, went ahead and linked in the chat, the Lower Southeast Rising website page um, that has the updated news linking to that Pinnit Portland map and documents page. Okay, thank um, you. You can see that there in the chat. All right, um, any more questions for Stephanie on land use? Okay, let me get our next thing up. Give me one second to use my other computer here. All right. Come on, show up. There it is. Okay. Gail, would you like to chat about Concert in the Park or do you want me to talk about Concert in the Park? Either way. All right, well, the, the brief thing is, uh, I'll give a brief intro and then you can lead the discussion. Does that sound good? Sure. All right, so when last we met our heroes concert in the park, we had decided that we wanted a concert, not a movie. And we had submitted some top music choices based on a survey that went out to the neighborhood with blues or uh, being near the top. Yep. Lucky for us, there is a gap in availability of blues concerts in the rest of the city. So we get first pick. And here are the three bands that were sent to us as possible choices. And I'm gonna let Gail tell you about the bands and her preference because I trust her musical taste way more than I trust mine. 
I like the Bundy band of all the, I watched all three of them and I watched multiple videos and that band sounded the best. Um, and if they bring the big band, we're gonna have a lot of fun. They kind of sound like Big Bad Voodoo Daddy or Squirrel Nut Zippers or the Big Band Fusion Jazz. There's a couple of them out there, but they're actually really talented. So that's my vote. The concert will be July 29th at seven, I believe. And we can do all sorts of stuff before if we want to we can have vendors and all sorts of things in the park if we want to in july we have a question from kim DeLeo. go ahead kim hey just a quick comment i'm with you i think on the bundy band they they had me at uh new orleans yes you know, from new orleans and i got excited <laughs> yes so, thanks for doing all the research too appreciate it oh, no that. worries uh, for those who don't know, Gail has been arranging our movie in the park for years, and now she gets the honor of switching to concerts. Um, <laughs> so it seems like um, uh, Bundy Band seems to kind of be the across the board, and we're supposed to send Jed our pick tomorrow. So um, I'll do it tonight. Okay, unofficial thumbs up for Bundy Band, thumbs down if you didn't like it. Um, thumbs in the middle if you have no opinion and want to go with Gail. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thumbs in the middle. <laughs> All right, looks like we trust Gail's judgment and the Bundy band sounds good. Yeah. All right, we're going to go ahead with that. Um, Gail, you also need to make a motion to pay for this. <laughs> oh, I am still trying to get a discount because we're poor. Um, but if that falls through, we will have to pay the whole thousand dollars, which really makes me cringe. <sighs> but I move we uh, fund our concert in the park. Do I have a second? I'll second. All right. I have a motion on the table to fund our movies in the park for up to one thousand yes. um, dollars. Seconded by Kim DeLeo. And I'll call down the roll for votes. Uh, Kim DeLeo? Yes. Gail? Aye. Stephanie? Aye. Derek? Aye. Lynn? Aye. Lorley? Aye. Kim Hill? Aye. And me, I'm an aye. Motion passes unanimous. We are funding concert in the park. And if um, we could find some way to make it a fundraiser, that would be cool too. Just well, a, I would be open to ideas anybody has that they want to also do um, and plan and manage. Uh, the other questions we need to answer is if we have any specific food vendor requests. Right. Um, and if we're planning to pair this event with another community gathering, and if there's any specific groups that we want to table. So, um, I am open for if anybody has any ideas for food vendor requests specifically. Ooh, right by you food cart. Oh, that was New Orleans based, I'm gonna guess, which would complement the music choice, mumbo gumbo. Okay. And and the owner of um, right by you, his name is Theron. He's actually from New Orleans, um, but he being a New Orleans native, he is spot on spot on but anyway all right uh, there's also a matt and my mayor's food cart but i don't believe they travel i believe they are just kind of housed on powell and like uh, 36th roughly all right gail so it looks like we would like some good delicious new orleans food if possible um with votes for right by you and mumbo gumbo as our top choices do you think you can send that to jed Mumbo, I'm looking for At Mumbo Gumbo and right by you. And by you is spelled like down in the bayou, not next to you. Okay. Darn it. 
Okay. All right. Um, other things. Do we want to plan? Right by you. Yep. Do we want to do a larger community gathering with this? Do we want to do a party before it? Our okay. event starts at 630. So that's another question we got to answer. Um, we could probably tell Jed that we are likely to combine it with another community gathering, but don't have details yet. I think we could be that vague. Gail, do you think we right. can be that vague? Yes. OK. Um, and then do we have any requests for groups we would like to table that we could help have them help us get? Bring them all. Uh, at a past event, we had um, our net team. Um, Nancy volunteered to table there, and we had information. So um, maybe be thinking about what groups we could get that would be really beneficial to neighbors, especially in July. Um, and BDNA will be there with a Soak It Week table, I'm sure, because that, be that is the um, right around that last week of July and August. So Beanie and A will be there. I know we're there every year that we host. Um, Gail is usually our amazing table person. Okay, we are we are way off on our agenda, but is what it is. So we're gonna move on to treasures report. Lynn, are you excited to do your second to last treasures report? Yes, and actually I'll be very fast. So hopefully we'll um, catch up to the to the time. Um, so we basically started off with $6,400, um, only had one transaction, uh, which was our domain website renewal, um, a couple of dividends deposited. And then with the upcoming uh, expense for the concert in the park and other funds that are being held at Southeast Uplift, we're gonna end up with $5,648.83. So that's my report, any questions? Any questions for Lynn? No, thank you, Lynn. All right. Um, oh, and we can report that the motions that were passed to add uh, Kim Hill and myself to the accounts, we took care of that. And she and I are both now on there so we can transition Lynn out of being treasurer at the end of May. Yes. All right, Kim DeLeo, tell us what's good at Southeast Step Lift. All right, a couple things. Uh, one is um, I'll start uh, with they have replaced Leah Fisher's position. And um, uh, let me get you the name. Oh, right here. Alex Charon is a new hire. Um, he's going to be doing uh, most of their, you know, fostering relationships, kind of grant work. Um, Machi will still be on uh, the land use. So it's, I think they're kind of splitting, splitting those duties. Um, but exciting is the Hey Neighbor flyer, which is now out, and there is a survey that they would like uh, us to complete. They, they only want one survey per neighborhood association, okay. um, but there are, uh, we can put the link in the chat as well for people to check out, but uh, this is a great resource for people. Um, there's uh, resources for neighborhood associations, like election uh, type handbook information. You can upload your um, neighborhood associations minutes. Um, if you're having an event, like maybe a concert in the park, you could fill out the insurance coverage online. And as I do believe you, we need to do that two weeks ahead of time, but um, I don't know, Chelsea, is that link or is that, uh, I'm um, seeing if I can find a way to link the email. There's usually like a, you can share this, like view this in a browser because um, this link is just for the survey, but I have um, here, view the email. I think, browser. I think that, that should pull up the actual like web page. Okay. I was trying to figure that out. Yeah, let's see. Not, I, I see all the links for how to do everything and then the email mm -hmm. itself, a okay, pay neighbor, mm -hmm. and then the survey link. Let's see. Yeah. Uh, apparently, I am just not with it today. Um, let me just do this. Thanks for being patient, folks. Um, 
because I feel like the hay neighbor was mm -hmm. I, I have, wasn't able to find just a link for the hay neighbor itself. Did I miss that in your email? Uh, I know I sent one to you just now in the chat. Oh, that one. Okay, no wonder I'm I'm losing my mind here. Or oh, that's what okay. Left of it because I was concerned that this one would only pull up the survey. Got it. Okay, yeah. Now I I understand. Give me one second mm -hmm. to get there. Oh, I, so I think some other information there, um, you know, probably grants, uh, available grants, um, you, we can link on there to our neighborhood association website, a Facebook page. Um, we would just have to let them know, you know, that we want that there. I did we click on hours in that there. Yeah, I did click on hours and it um, had quite a bit of information already, but but that's up and running. And so we just need to do the survey by the end of the month. And so I didn't know how you wanted to handle that, Chelsea, if since they just want one survey per neighborhood association, if you wanted to do it as a group through email, if you wanted to do it, you know, I, on behalf of everyone. Yeah, I looked at the questions and really they're like, I think pretty much any of us could answer it because it's it's all really basic information, like who we are, how many are on the board. Um, the only thing I'll need to, like uh, if Laura Glee could help us out with the average attendance of the last three general meetings. Mm -hmm. um, and then the topics we can pull from the agenda as well. Are you, um, mm -hmm. Kim, are you willing to do this? The yeah. survey? Cause yeah. that would be extremely helpful. Cause it's really, all that information is in our minutes and Mm hmm. So if you don't mind doing that, I would really, really appreciate it. Yes, absolutely. Thank all you right. so much. Yeah, no problem. So that's all I have. Oh, and then uh, we they did uh, update the bylaws and which was, you know, long overdue and those have been were approved last meeting. So, yay. So maybe we can go on to bigger and better things. It will be nice to move on from the emails that I get about bylaws in the BDNA email. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Thank um, you so much, Kim, for being our sure. Southeast Uplift rep. We really appreciate it. Another one of those thankless but necessary jobs. Um, the quick update on the Sparrowhawk native plant sale that we're trying to host for the fall as a um, both a fun thing in our neighborhood and a fundraiser. Uh, we are at the point where we just need to approve this event as a board um, and say, yes, we can sign the papers to agree to this. And I'm still arguing with the community center about our rental there, but we do have a backup location of the Moose Lodge um, and a third location of possibly the Learning Gardens Lab parking lot, but that would require a civic use of building permit from PPS, and we all know what that is like. So... Um, they're able to put kind of like tentative space um, in our paperwork until we get that situated. So I'd like to um, motion that we um, move forward with signing the paperwork to be the host for the uh, fall plant sale for Southeast for Sparrowhawk native plants. Do you have a second? A second. second. <laughs> <laughs> both Kim's seconded <laughs> simultaneously. So you guys can fight it out who actually gets the second there. Like Kim Hill will get it. <laughs> <laughs> so we have a motion on the table to uh, sign on to this plant sale as just indicated, seconded by Kim Hill. I'll go down the roll. And I see that Mirabai is amending that slightly with being a backup site. So thank you. Um, okay. Go down the roll. I'm an I. Kim DeLeo. I. Gail. I. Stephanie. I. Derek. I. Lynn. I. Laura Lee. I. Kim H. Kim Hill. I. All right. Motion passes. I'll go ahead and sign that paperwork and keep going. And I know Linda already ducked out for the night, but Master Gardeners are also going to partner with us on that event and bring um, an educational component to it and a bunch of volunteers. So, yeah. and equipment. They are um, 
Master Gardeners and Black Futures Farm and maybe some Learning Gardens Lab. We're going to pull everybody in and make this awesome. the event it was going to be before COVID hit, um, just with beating a hanging out too. So um, we can figure out how we split the funds later. Um, I'm up for whatever on that. So, okay. Stephanie, I'm going to turn it over to you for the Community Center letter. Go ahead. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> All right, so uh, I hope you all had a chance to read the letter and its attachments that I sent out recently regarding the Brentwood Darlington Community Center. And so, as you know, we have a big building in our midst that has a community center name, but it has never, for us, you know, in, in say the last 15 years, uh, been a real community center with programming and a place to, come and go and meet people and well known in the neighborhood and so on. Uh, it's been operated by um, uh, Impact Northwest, which rents out space. Uh, we have certain privileges as neighborhood association um, and we can uh, use space there, reserve space there free of charge and so on. We have a key. Um, but um, there's a problem uh, that it's really not being run the way a the ground lease with Portland Public Schools specifies as a full service community center, and it hasn't been maintained by impact or the county, which are both responsible. Uh, and we see how deteriorated it looks. You know, the roof is covered with moss. It, the building needs paint, the inside furnishings need uh, replacing, the kitchen needs an update. Um, it's a uh, the building really needs a lot of work. And so our investigations into this situation have revealed that um, it's, it's a situation where no one is accountable. No, there's no title to the building, but there's also no, no accountability for following the terms of the ground lease. The county is the um, uh, 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 first lessee and impact is sub lessee. Lessor is Portland Public Schools. Uh, it just seems as though no one is taking responsibility to act. And um, so we are have proposed, and Andy Nelson of Impact Northwest um, um, supports this, um, that we appeal for a political settlement because the various attorneys and bureaucrats and administrators of the different entities the county impact, um, Portland Public Schools have not been able to resolve this or even have shown that much interest in it. And, um, uh, but if we don't, if we want to save this building and have it operated as a vibrant and open and accessible and well-known community center, we, I feel that BDNA needs to take some action now. And um, the action that I'm proposing is that under Chelsea's name, representing the, the BDNA, we appeal to uh, Commissioner Jessica Vega Peterson to intervene and find a solution. So in the letter, you know, we've laid out what the problem is, what the request is, and we've outlined a possible solution, but we're not dictating to her. We are appealing to her and saying that we can lose this building, a valuable public asset that was funded by taxpayers, if we do not act now and begin finding a solution and finding accountability, appointing an owner, making sure that the building is rehabbed and opened as a community center. So um, we've drafted this letter and it's, there's an attachment that goes through the entire history that we've been able to reconstruct with a lot of difficulty, I might add, and a list of the documents we've been able to, um, to assemble that have guided us in, in formulating this, this history and coming to understand the situation. So I'm proposing tonight that, um, are moving that we submit this letter with this, the attachments and the ground lease and the uh, another legal document that assigns uh, 
a, a sub lessee status to impact Northwest to operate the building um, under lease to public, uh, the public school system. Incredibly enough, this is so complicated. But I'm, I move that we send this letter to uh, Jessica Vega Peterson and give her a chance to um, uh, think it over, talk it over with staff and, um, and then reach back to Chelsea and the BDNA to uh, let us know what she thinks or what they think and see if we can get something going to save this building and turn it into a vibrant community center. Um, so I, I move that we submit the letter um, with the qualification that um, uh, you know, we invite uh, Jessica Vega Peterson or perhaps Chelsea Will to a private meeting to discuss the situation and perhaps we encourage local residents to, uh, to be advocate for uh, uh, restoring the building and opening it to the community, uh, but not do anything beyond that until we give the commissioner and her staff a chance to act. So, so I think that's too many things for a motion. We need to, to motion for a letter and then we can motion for other things on top of it. But if we combine, right. uh, it's actually my, convoluted. Yeah, I understand. Um, sorry. Um, the, okay. um, and oh. I, I don't want to hold before we motion to make sure that there's no other discussion. From right. The yeah. Okay. Um, I have one modification I would like to request on the letter, and that is I'd like your name added as well, because I think it will have more impact coming from both the chair and the land use chair, especially since Stephanie, you are the one who put in all of the time and effort to research this, come up with this and write this letter. Your name needs to be on there to give you the credit you deserve for it. Well, okay, thank you, Chelsea. Then I can uh, do that and I thank you. And I can print the letter out and the documents and so on and bring it and prepare an envelope and bring it to you okay. for signature. And I think sending a paper letter is more effective than emailing it. What do you think? Uh, usually, yes. So, okay. So any other discussion before we put a motion on the table? All right. So since Stephanie said that whole other motion again, we're going to say Stephanie motioned to sub send this letter as amended uh, through discussion. I see Gail saying second, 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 second in the chat. Second, 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 second. <laughs> so Gail seconds this motion very enthusiastically. And so I'll roll down the roll real fast. Uh, Gail, I'll let you go first. Send, send an email and the letter. Okay, so that's an aye. All right, Stephanie. Aye. Derek. Aye. Lynn. Aye. Laura Lee. Aye. Kim Hill. Aye. Kim DeLeo. Aye. Sorry. <laughs> so, Sorry. I was and on. myself, I'm an aye. Motion passes. We'll go ahead and get that letter, both physical and email. Um, and, and then thank you so much, Stephanie, for putting the effort into that. Um, yeah, it's, it's really important. I think I think if we move now, we can we can rescue we can rescue the building. Um, but now, um, I I had also sent in my email, you know, a series of actions we could take. And now I've thought better of them. I mean, I don't want to act on all of them uh, before giving the commission a chance to um, to to respond. So I I move that we just um, uh, have her. Um, well, that we send a letter, well, we were, we're gonna send the letter, but I'm envisioning perhaps a special discussion between Commissioner Peterson and Chelsea to discuss the, um, the situation. And then perhaps uh, BDNA can do something to alert our, our residents and get them really interested in, in in rescue. None of that requires motions or anything oh, though. Okay, we can fine. invite, we can, we can have discussions. All of that is just administrative. So we're okay. all good. Okay. So we are so close. Anything else? We got one more minute. Um, what, one quick thing that it has, that's not the BDCC, but um, has to do with BDNA minutes. Um, I've, I've noticed that in the city archives, the last minutes that we have for our neighborhood association end in 2010. 
And I want to know where all these minutes are that we've been submitting to Southeast Uplift for years now. Where are they? I mean, these are public record. And it's very helpful to be able to go back and see what was discussed and when and what the outcomes were. And I do not know where our records are. And um, Kim DeLeo, do you mind um, checking with Southeast Uplift to where we would go to access that? Because I know they've moved things around on the city website, but they didn't take other pages down. So um, I, I know they do submit them to the city from Southeast Uplift somewhere and Southeast Uplift would know where it is. It's probably on a new um, Civic Life site somewhere. And so. what specifically are you looking for? The archive minutes from 2010 forward. Well, or 2011 forward, yeah. yeah. Okay. So basically where are they archiving our minutes now? Because okay. they stop at 2010 on the website. Okay. And Stephanie, do you mind sending that link to Kim DeLeo so she can show them? Mm -hmm. Because I found if I don't show them with a link, sometimes they don't understand what I'm looking for. Okay, this is the link to the city archives where I found old minutes. Is that mm. what you're saying? Yep. Yes. So send that link to Kim. Kim yeah. Kim Southeast Uplift, where the rest of them are. Okay. Okay. Swell. And okay. Um, yeah, and then we've, um, been, we've been so careful to take minutes. I just want to say real fast and mm -hmm. and 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 submit them or make them available to Southeast Uplift. And I feel they've just vanished. So yeah, that would be great, Kim. Okay. And I, um, Stephanie. Yeah. I've, this is Lori Lee. Stephanie, I think that that's a really great question because I have had, um, I've contacted Southeast Uplift a few times, making sure that I'm doing the correct thing by sharing the link to our minutes um, with them. And they said that that's all I need to do. But honestly, I'm with you. I don't know what happens to them after that. Okay, good. Okay. All right, great. Well, thank you, Lori Lee and, and Kim. And okay. Sorry. We had a question in the chat and I want to clarify. Um, Kim Hill, you said, can we please put this on the agenda in May? And I missed what we were talking about when you commented that. Can you let me know specifically what you'd like on the agenda? Kim, you gotta unmute. Did we lose you? Oh, we lost Kim Hill. Okay, I'm going to guess that maybe it was about the um, the letter and the community center and Commissioner Vega Peterson. So um, I'll follow up with Kim on that. And do we have anything else? I know we're two minutes behind. All right. Uh -huh. On this lovely Thursday, April 7th, thank you all for joining us. And our next meeting is the April land use meeting on the 14th. Make sure and hang out with Stephanie before she's done being land use chair and see everything that's good to know about land use and thank her for all of the work she has put in. Um, and have a great night neighbors. I'll see y'all at the next meeting. Okay.